Mother's Day once again. Everybody give a big applause to our mothers. Our Mother's Day today, and also we are celebrating uh, Rolanda Turner's 90th birthday. <laughs> and uh, since um, uh, the title of the message is Applaud, so you, you are going to applaud a lot this morning. And we give a great a big applaud to our Lord Jesus, who have granted her longevity with good health and good spirit, let us give him yeah. yeah. Yes. Not only that, it helps uh, your um, uh, blood circulate uh, really good when you apply with, with your whole heart, you know? And today, I want us to give a big applause to our Hokkien man. Do you know why? Do you know why? Oh yes, they prepared a feast for Hokkien ladies, and they were worked so hard the whole week, I believe. And they cook delicious food. Not only that, they decorate the church hall. It's beautiful. And to make this day memorable for the ladies. And the best thing is, ladies, we don't have to clean up. Yeah. <laughs> You know, whenever Mother's Day, we celebrate Mother's Day, there can be a mixed emotions sometimes, some people, <clears throat> because some of you perhaps lost your mother, and some of the people didn't have a mother, or some people wants to have to be a mother, but they couldn't be a mother. And some people had mother, but didn't have a good relationship with their mothers. So I acknowledge that we all share mixed emotions today. But when we celebrate Mother's Day, we often think about what the universal. It is a common characteristics of mothers, that whether they do very well or not, they practice it in their daily lives or not, they have this common thread throughout. When we think about mothers, what is that? Mothers love, right? Mothers have this maternal instinct, they all love their children, whether they do it well or not. So that's why I picked a passage that talks about love. <coughs> do you hear me? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I certainly don't hear myself. <coughs> and today's passage, our Lord Jesus talking to his disciples, saying, my children. See, he is facing his death. He knows that he is not going to be with them, in physically present with them any longer. So he <coughs> had to say one basic thing for, for them to live life after he's gone. What is the most important thing? What is the most basic thing? Is that I give you a new commandment, right? Love one another as I have loved you. Love one another would be too bad. But he said, as I have loved you. 
so that the world will know that you are my disciples. So this morning, I want us to ponder upon Christ-like love, what, how Christ loved us, and how do we practice in our daily lives Christ-like love. And it's, uh, since the Mother's Day, all mothers have to uh, learn and renew, review, and examine their way of loving their children. Not only that, all our fathers, all our people need to know Christ-like love, how to do Christ-like love in our daily lives <laughs> so that the world, this community would know we are the disciples of Jesus Christ. And this we ought to because Jesus didn't say, I wish you love one another as I have loved you. He didn't say, I recommend, I desire for you to love one another. He says, one, I command you to love one another. So this is commandment that we must love one another. We must love like Jesus. We must practice Christ-like love in our daily lives. Amen? Amen. I will come up with uh, three S's. Sacrificial and secure and supportive. Sacrificial, secure, and supportive. We can go all over the town, all of the way, when we talk about Jesus' love. Right? So we just gonna concentrate on these three things this morning. First of all, Christ-like love is what? Sacrificial. When we think about Jesus Christ, the first thing we think of Him sacrificing His life for humanity because He loves us. God so loved the world, He sent His only begotten Son, whoever believes in Him will not perish, have everlasting life. And Jesus knew that He is going to suffer on the cross. He knew, but he entered into Jerusalem knowing what's going to happen to him. On the cross, he had the power to stop his suffering, but he endured his suffering. He died. If he didn't die, we are still condemned. We don't have any future. And he rose from the dead to give us a solid assurance. So when we think about Jesus Christ, we think about sacrificial love that he did. And when we think about talking about mother's love, we remember mother's sacrificial love. You know, a young woman was... Uh, going to a place south of England with uh, her baby. And she never reached the destination because of a snowstorm. And when the rescuers found her under the amount of snow, they found that she had only the inner garments on her and the face down. And when they lift her up, there was all her outer clothes wrapped with something, and they found out there was baby boy still alive and well. Before her death, she took off her clothes, covered this baby with her clothes, and then sheltered him with her body so that baby to not get this chilling snow and suffocated by snow. And that baby became the prime minister of England, Great Britain. You see, mother's sacrificial love can do a miracle and lead our children to live up to what God has created them to be. So that when we encounter such 
emergency, life and death. And I believe we all have a such love. But how do we practice such love in our daily lives? Mm -hmm. There is a no, no storm. How do we practice such a sacrificial love for our children? I know many of mothers have quit their dream, quit their job, they have quit, uh, abandoned their financial independence to raise their children out of uh, love. They sacrifice, and they sacrifice their time and energy to work two, three different jobs to provide good houses and good food and good clothes. Mothers, that's how we sacrifice for our children so that our children can reach. Children become the person, people that our Lord God has created them to be. Amen? <coughs> and then, second is the what? Christ-like love is secure love. Secure love. It is a forever kind of love. Love lasts, love, love never fails. Love, his love lasts forever. You know, there was a funny letter that, um, that a woman wrote a letter to her boyfriend. And she says, I love you forever. Uh, please take me back. I love you, I love you. I think about you all the time. I pray for you all the time. And I love you, I love you. I Day and night, I love you, I love you forever. And forever yours. She signed it. And then P.S. Congratulations on your winning of state lottery. <laughs> Is that love? Is that really love? Is that kind of last uh, lifetime? Our Lord Jesus said, John chapter 10, I believe 28. Lord Jesus said what? I love you and my people will never perish and no one going to snatch them out of my hand. We did this uh, yo-yo, remember? <clears throat> Just in case. Right? What Jesus is saying, that I never learned it after I have done it. <laughs> and now I try again. Right? You all know how to play this thing, yeah? Uh, coming up. See? Whether we going down, stay down, and one, one flick of uh, his, when we look up to him, it's going right back up, even though when we go further out, one flick, one repentance, we can be back. We begin in the palm of his hand, we will always stay, and nobody can snatch us out of Jesus' hand. That is true love, that his love lasts forever. You know, when we think, when our babies are so cute and curly, and we love them no matter what, they poop and they shishi all over, we love them. But when they grow up, like a become an adult, if they shishi and poop up everywhere, anywhere, do we still love them? It's hard, yeah? But we forget that our adult kids, mothers, still need your love no matter what we do. You do discipline your children when they are growing up and they became an adult. You do expect them to carry out um, what needs to be done as an adult, but when they make mistakes and falling apart, you do discipline them, but we still need to 
love them, to show them. Well, I will go way out to help you, right? And 